this episode of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine was made possible by contributions from slaves like you. Thank you very much. It's a new morning in America. Fresh. Vital. The old cynicism is gone. We have faith in our leaders. We're optimistic as to what becomes of it all. It really boils down to our ability to accept. We don't need pessimism. There are no <laughs> limits. It's the end of the world as we know it. I feel fine. Good morning, slaves, and welcome to another edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine. The show that... <coughs> <coughs> what the fuck? Somebody stop that pig. Tonight, look... <coughs> You bastards die just like we do. Thanks, Roddy. Yep, peeps are waking up to the reality that the state and its protectors can be defeated. Even in surveillance societies like the UK, where there's one fucking CCTV camera for every 14 Brits. A new report by The Guardian found that the riots that rocked England this summer were not merely an opportunity for peeps to loot shit, but to show the motherfuckers up top that they are not in charge. Like, I actually wanted to burn the cars and just see it burn as well. Like, I saw it as my opportunity, like now was the opportunity to get revenge. It wasn't even just the police, just the whole government, like everything they do, they make things harder for us. The report also stated that street gangs held the truce during the riot so that they could make the authorities pay. You had different areas that had gang related problems working together. Everyone put their problems away for that week and was able to get along because we had one thing in common and that was to hurt the government and the police. In my side of the world, Vancouver's mayor told a local paper that the hockey riots that demolished downtown in June put so much terror on the government that city managers became afraid of shutting down Occupy Vancouver for fear of a repeat rebellion. In Germany and France, the motherfucking resistance damaged railroad tracks and fought the pigs to stop a massive yearly shipment of nuclear waste. The train saboteurs are pissed because they say that storing that radioactive shit soup near population centers is not safe. Meanwhile, the COP17 climate talks in Durban, South Africa have been a total fucking failure. Just like last year's clusterfuck in Cancun, this was no fucking surprise, and peeps are realizing that if they want to stop the climate catastrophe, they can't wait for the fucking capitalists to make up their minds. Just like in BC, where 61 First Nations sign an agreement that has essentially built a wall that prevents oil coming from the motherfucking tar sands through their territories and into the Pacific Ocean. We hold more than 25% of Enbridge's proposed pipeline route in our territories, and we will never allow it to be built. We will be the wall that Enbridge cannot break through, period. This was followed up by a call from indigenous leaders in so-called Canada to blockade oil pipelines in three provinces and several northern U.S. states. Indigenous nations in Canada are fucking angry because of the high levels of poverty and the shitty living conditions in their communities. The only to begin in. This is only a warning to the government. We're going to be more aggressive and we're going to do it together. Because it's so the motherfucking Egyptian resistance has also been doing its part at stopping the flows of fossil fuels. This time pipelines bringing natural gas to the murderous Israeli government were blown the fuck up. This is the eighth pipeline bombing since the beginning of the Egyptian revolution and this time the attackers left a message in the sand that read We will not allow gas exports to Israel. Last but not least, a lot of cases involving members of the motherfucking resistance in so-called Canada are wrapping up. Willow Violet Louise Riley, arrested during the five cock rings of death in Vancouver, was given conditional charges and no fucking jail time after she saved the comrade from being arrested during the heart attack action. In Toronto, 11 people charged with conspiracy-related charges to the G-motherfucking-20 are going free, while six peeps will unfortunately get some jail time. To find out how you can support these political prisoners, go to guelphprisonersolidarity.wordpress.com. 
Here's David Prachitka. The same communities that took the streets in opposition in the G20 last June stand strong and united today. This movement has no ringleaders. Their tactics of repression will not slow us down. They will never silence us. And Ryan Rainville, who was charged for smashing up a pigmobile during the G20, got no additional jail time for this amazing job at pimping that ride. Here's Ryan from an interview I did with him this past summer. The greatest thing to remember was the what's, what was seemingly uh, exemplified uh, as collective solidarity amongst people who I didn't know, who I'm not sure if any of them knew each other, but were willing to come to uh, each other's immediate um, you know, help uh, in times of need. Solo voy con mi pena, sola va mi condena. Correré mi destino para burlar la ley, perdido en el corazón de la grande Babilón. Me dicen el clandestino, yo soy el quebra ley, mano negra clandestina, mexicano clandestino, hondureño clandestino, maricopa ilegal. Es lo que quieren hacer, lo que hay en Guantánamo Bay, es lo que quieren como si fuéramos nosotros que terroristas. No somos terroristas, simplemente que es lo que queremos hacer, pan, llevar pan a la casa, a la, a la familia. Pero está duro, está canico simplemente por venir a trabajar. As the actions of the motherfucking resistance become more spectacular and successfully stop the flows of capital, so will the state's repression of our fearless comrades. In Canada, we witness a massive police operation that tried to crush the protests against the 20 gangsters of the industrialized world. Recently, it has been revealed that the energy pimps are collaborating with the state in espionage, infiltration, and psychological operations against indigenous and dissident groups in North America. Just listen to this spook at a recent oil industry conference held in Houston. If you're a PR representative in this industry, in this room today, recommend you do three things. Download the uh, U.S. Army slash Marine Corps counterinsurgency manual, because we are dealing with an insurgency. There, there's a lot of good lessons in there. And uh, coming from a military background, I've, I've found the insight in that extremely remarkable. Yep, our enemy is a powerful one, with many fucking resources. But in the history of the motherfucking resistance, we have seen how the underdog can punk Goliath when peeps act smart. Fuck. It's a decoy. They must have bounced the upload from here with a proxy. They could be anywhere. So before you go out and do some gangster shit, here are some things that you might want to consider. To help me out, I reached out to Mark Cook and Ed Mead, a couple of real motherfucking revolutionaries who did time for actions performed as members of the legendary George Jackson Brigade. Hey y'all, how the fuck are ya? Fair to middling. Yeah, and same way, just treading water, you know. <laughs> Tip 1. You are going to jail. Yep, get mentally prepared for hard motherfucking time, shitty food and dangerous fucking roommates. Yeah, I know, you don't want to get caught. But like the old saying goes, Don't do the crime if you can't do the time, yeah. If you're going to do something illegal, you have to, you have to understand that there's consequences that go with that. And that if you, you have to be ready to accept those consequences and not as soon as you're arrested, which, which is a possibility whenever you do anything illegal, as soon as you're arrested, to rat your friends out. I mean, if you're going to, if, if this is strong enough for you to, to risk taking these actions, then it's strong enough for you to go do your time. And, 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 and to think of the prison as just another front in a global class struggle. If you don't think you can handle being in the clink, there's plenty of honorable shit that you can do to help the motherfucking resistance. Just stay the fuck away from the gangster shit. Here's the oath that Mark Cook took when he decided to give his life to the struggle. If ever I should break, break my stride or falter at my comrade's side, this oath shall kill me. If ever my word should prove untrue, should I betray the many or the few, this oath shall kill me. If ever I should withhold my hand or show fear before the hangman, this oath shall surely kill me. That, and it's in a sense it's saying, you know, you have to make a commitment that there are consequences. You know, 
if you, if you move in the front, you have to understand what's going to happen in the back. Tip two. The motherfucking internet machine is not your friend. So you have crossed what revolutionaries call the fear threshold. And now you want to figure out what to fucking do. You think, I'll just email the stimulator and ask him if it's a good idea. The answer is, don't fucking do that shit. I will not reply and probably will blacklist your ass from my email. Reason being that one, I don't fucking know you. But two, that the internet machine, as useful as it is for broadcasting riot porn and networking, is a perfected intelligence and surveillance gathering apparata. Evidence abounds on how pigs use the shit people post online to build cases against them. Well, Facebook isn't just for keeping in touch with friends anymore. In fact, what you put on your profile could be used against you in court. Also, unencrypted info sent over email it's fucking easy to intercept, not to mention that if you use corporate email like Gmail, there's no fucking guarantee that those rich nerds from Google are not gonna give it up to the feds. Who here uses Gmail? Well, you're all screwed. And then there's the wide use of face crack, in which we are essentially doing the cops job for them by providing them with maps of our communities and networks. But if you must use Fedbook, Use a fake fucking email and make a fake fucking name and never put your photo up there. Please note that this not guarantee your anonymity, but it'll certainly make it harder for the pigs to track down who the fuck you are. Tip 3. If detained or under any other circumstance, don't talk to the cops. Let me repeat that. Don't talk to the cops. And before I explain why, I want to say... Don't talk to the fucking cops. Anything you say will be used against you, and not just in court, but right fucking there in the interrogation room. You might think you can outsmart them. Wrong. Don't even fucking try. These fuckers are trained to fuck with you and get you to slip. It's a crime to lie to the FBI, but you don't have to say anything. You shouldn't say anything. You should, as, soon, as soon as they identify themselves as police officers, well, of course I'll be cooperative. Anything you want to know, ask my lawyer. My lawyer will, will my lawyer will, will communicate anything you need to know. Mm -hmm. And and leave it at that. Anything that goes beyond that, any impulse you have that says, oh gee, maybe it'll, they'll think nicer of me if I, uh, you know, be friendly, uh, is only going to hurt you or is going to hurt somebody else. With all this said, there's no secret formula to develop in security culture. Even knowing a person for a long fucking time does not guarantee that they are not a pig or that he won't snitch on you when the going gets tough. Developing a crew of peeps that you trust can take years of shared experience. So don't go jumping the gun and doing some stupid shit that'll get you stuck in a cage for the rest of your life. Be smart, educate yourself, while maintaining a fighting spirit. And that about us for this edition of It's the End of the World as We Know It and I Feel Fine. Stay tuned next time for the full interview with Mark Cook and Ed Mead of the George Jackson Brigade. Also, I am super impressed with Peep's generosity during our winter fundraiser. So big ups go out to Otis, Ravi, Nicodemus, Richard, Casey, Steven, Andres, Peter, Pedro, John, Marcelo, Alexandra, Keith, Thomas, Zoe, Dennis, Nigel, Sebastian, Elliot, Tristan, Samuel, and Rodney Pozole. I also want to let you motherfuckers know that if you want some free swag from the winter fundraiser, you've got till December 26. So don't fuck around. Sorry, Santa. Sorry, Jesus. <laughs> to comment on this show or for links to security culture information just visit my fucking website stimulator.tv and remember lose lips sink ships remember kids you can podcast high quality video of this show at submedia.tv